I'll be showing nine new features in Microsoft Forms. Many of these have been top customer requests, so let's get started. The first new feature is the Redesign Forms homepage. So at office.com right here, I'm going to go to the lower left and choose Forms. I'm here on the newly redesigned Forms homepage on Recent. And you can see these are my most recently used forms. I can go here and filter. So if I want to look for the training session one, I just type training and it filtered. Clear that out. I could drop this down and show it just like a list. So if you want to see your recent forms in a list. And with the dot, dot, dot menu here, I can do things like add to my pinned list. So I'm going to add to pinned. Now, if I get a pinned, you'll see the forms that I've pinned, and those are the three forms. And anytime, if you want to see all the forms you have, click all my forms here. Now, this shows the full list of all the forms I have. And again, I can filter. So if I'm looking for a training here, there's that one. I can choose the list versus the tiles, just like we could on the other page. Now, the other important one is a lot of people have asked, how do I copy my form? Click the dot, 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 and that's where I can do copy. I can move it, I can delete it. So maybe I want to copy this form here. And there I just made a copy and there's Mike's training session. I could also go to deleted forms and this shows all the forms that I've ever deleted. If I want to retrieve those, it's really easy in deleted forms. The second new feature isn't really a demo, but it is an announcement that forms is going to go up to a limit of 400 in the very near future. That means especially for educators that have a lot of forms, the previous limit was 200 forms, it's going up to 400 forms, and that's going to be rolling out in the coming weeks and months. In addition, any of the Microsoft Teams polls that you use do not count against your forms limit. So that means you could do as many polls as you wanted in Teams with forms, and that won't count against this new limit of 400. The third new feature is text formatting in forms. So I've got a new form I've created here, and we'll give it a title, and I'll click Add New. I'm going to go to text here and we'll type in some text. Now, if I select the text like this and I let go, the little pop-up menu comes. So I can choose bold, I can choose italics, and I can choose underlined. And you can see here, it is now bold, italicized, and underlined. I can also add a new question here. So we'll use choice and I'll show how the shortcuts work. So I'll select question and choose control B, the classic bolding shortcut. In this one, we'll do control I and it'll be italicized. Option two, control U to underline. So it's really easy now to add formatting to your forms question types. This is in the process of rolling out. So if you don't quite see it yet, you should very soon and take advantage of it when it rolls out to you. The fourth new feature is the ability to share your form with very specific people or groups. So I'm gonna open up my training session form here and I'm gonna go up to the upper right and choose share. Now you've probably seen this share before, but I'm gonna drop down this one here and there's a new one that says specific people in my organization can respond. If I choose this, I can enter the name of the actual people who can respond. So in this case, I'm gonna enter Alex Wilbur, he can respond and we'll add Henry. So Alex and Henry are the only two people who can respond. You can see their names here, I can drill in and actually see that list if it's a longer number of people, or I can go here and delete those people. What that means is only those people can respond. This can't get sent out to other people who you don't want to look at your form or your survey. So it's really nice kind of to control the environment of exactly who can respond. The fifth new feature lets people who have responded to your survey or form or quiz print out their results, or you can print to a PDF. This is kind of like having a little backup if you filled out that survey response. It's also been a top requested feature. So I'm going to go here on a form I've created and we'll go to the dot, dot, dot menu here and we'll choose settings. Now scroll down to the bottom and you're going to see this new option that says allow receipt of responses after submission. We're going to check that on. So I'll go hit the share button right here and I will copy the link and I'm going to sign in as Alex and we'll fill that out. Okay, I'm signed in as Alex. We'll fill this out really quick. This was just an incredible training. And we'll hit submit. Now you'll see this new button, print or get PDF of answers. Click this. It pops up the print dialog so you can see all the responses I gave are right here. I could print this out in my regular printer or I could choose this Microsoft print to PDF. So I could choose this here and click print and choose Alex responses and click save. And then I've saved this off as a PDF. 
The sixth new feature allows immersive reader to be used on any anonymous type of form. In the past, you had to be signed in to be able to use the immersive reader. Now you can use the immersive reader for an anonymous form type. So let's check that out. Here's philosophy quiz. And I'm Kara, I'm gonna share this out and we're gonna let this be anyone can respond. Totally anonymous. Anyone in the world can fill out my philosophy quiz. So I'll copy that link. Now we're gonna switch over. Now I'm just gonna paste this link in Edge, just pretend I'm anyone, and hit this. The quiz pops open, just like you'd expect for Anonymous. Now I can go to the dot, dot, dot menu and say enable immersive reader right here. Now anywhere that I hover, I can get the immersive reader. So right here, I'm gonna open the immersive reader and I get the full immersive reader I could normally, I'll play. You who said education begins the gentleman, but reading. And I can do all the things in Immersive Reader that I normally would. I won't give the full demo here, but for those of you that are familiar with the Immersive Reader, you can see there's many, many different capabilities, and I can have all of those accessed right here in an anonymous form. The next three features take place on Forms Mobile. The seventh new feature is Forms on Office for iPad. Okay, I'm here on my iPad. Let's launch Office Mobile. I'm right here, we'll tap on Actions, and you're gonna see Create a Form. Let's tap that, and we'll give it a title, Forms is on Office iPad, Woohoo! Now back here in the main area, we'll go to Home, and I'm gonna pin it, so I can just tap right here and say Pin to Top. I'm gonna pin my form right to the top in Office Mobile. There we are. The eighth new feature is adding a forms poll to a Teams meeting right in your iPhone or Android. So I'm here in my iPhone and I've switched to my calendar and I'll join this meeting. So I'm in the meeting and I'm tapping on chat in the upper right. That opens up the pane and now I'm going to click the little plus and you're going to see a forms icon. Tap that and now I can add my forms poll. So I can give a question. What is your favorite color? We'll give a few options. Red, blue or yellow. And now, even at the bottom, I can check and uncheck some of the choices here. Keep responses anonymous and share results or not. Check that back on and click save. And now I'm ready to post. So I'm going to click send to push this out in the meeting from my iPhone. Okay, now it's pushed out and I can see it on my iPhone, but on desktop or web, anything else, I can vote. So I'm going to vote for blue. And there it just showed up blue 100% for my vote. So now I can do all this from my iPhone. The ninth and final new feature uses Forms Intelligence to quickly generate options for responses on your mobile phone. I'm here on my iPhone and I will launch Office Mobile. Now I'll tap on Actions. Now I'll scroll down and tap Create a Form. Let's give it a title. OK, Intelligent Forms on Mobile. Now tap Add Question and we'll do Choice. I'll give it a title, What Day of the Week is Your Favorite? Automatically form senses that it's days of the week and look at all the choices. I can easily add all the days of the week. Let's try another one. Tap add question, choice. And this time we're gonna ask a question about the satisfaction of my training. So let's give a question here. And as you see, as I add the word satisfied about the presentation, it automatically added a bunch of choices, very satisfied and all the other options automatically. So I add that and ready to go with my question. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.